Anything you say can and will be held against you in a court of law, and you have the right to an attorney. These are our Miranda rights. They are required to be read to us before in any, interroga in any interrogations and after we are taken into custody. These rights are a warning and a reminder of the rights that we hold as American citizens. However, recently there has been much speculation over whether it should be mandatory that these rights are read to us. As a criminal justice major, I have become very familiar with these Miranda rights and the importance that they hold in our country. After I provide insight on how the Miranda rights came about, the controversy surrounding them, and how important they are, hopefully everyone in this room will also agree that they are important to this country. Ernesto Miranda was tried in 1966 on counts of rape and kidnapping. He was given a sheet of paper on which he was forced to confess, and on this, on this confession sheet, his rights were written. But he was not read these rights, and they were not pointed out to him. It was only assumed that he knew that they were there. In court, he protested that this was unconstitutional, and he was right. This was unconstitutional. We cannot assume that people know their rights. He when he was declared guilty, he appealed this court case decision, and the Supreme Court agreed that all suspects must be read their rights. This court decision provides the foundation for how vital Miranda rights are for our freedom. But why can't we assume that everyone knows their freedoms? Most of us know our Miranda rights, whether it be from learning them in school, or most likely from hearing them on Law and Order or CSI. But what if you have not learned your basic rights in school? And what if you cannot watch these TV shows for one reason or another? What if you are poor and uneducated? Critics of, critics of the legal system and the court systems already argue that the poor are unfairly treated and represented by the courts. This claim is very serious and not taken lightly. What do you suppose would happen if we did not read a poor man his rights and assume that he knew them? You know what they say about assuming. Most likely, this man would not know that he had a right to an attorney. Taking away the Miranda rights will only reinforce any arguments of prejudice and inequality. And what about the mentally ill? It would also be unlikely that a mentally ill man would know his rights if he were a suspect as well. In fact, Eric Drogan, a forensic psychologist and attorney, says that there is much research being done on how important the Miranda rights are when dealing with the mentally ill suspects and he even suggests that the Miranda rights should be rewritten for mentally ill people so that it is more understandable and more clear. This shows how important they are if we need to be rewriting them to make them more clear so that people fully understand them. If the legal system has preferential tendencies towards the more fortunate and healthy class, then it is extremely important <coughs> that we keep the Miranda rights in order to level the playing field and preserve equality. But not everyone agrees. William Rehnquist, a past attorney general in charge of the Office of Legal Counsel, believes that the Miranda rights are responsible for lower clearance rates, or, in other words, a higher unsolved crime rate. I understand his disappointment in the fact that we have low clearance rates, but if there is a new trend in an inability to obtain a voluntary confession, then it is impossible to blame it solely on the existence of the Miranda rights. In fact, the Reason Foundation, a public policy nonprofit organization, <coughs> estimates that less than 1% of unsolved cases are due to suppressed confessions. Suppressed confessions are confessions that don't hold up in court because of technicality problems due to Miranda rights. In other words, maybe they weren't read to the suspect. Less than 1% is a tiny uh, portion of these crimes. This new trend can, cause, can be caused by any number of reasons, including an increase in the crime rate altogether. Proportionally, if the crime rate, in, if the crime rate increases, then the unsolved crime rate will increase as well. In addition to these findings, top administrators of the largest American police departments were surveyed in the Journal of Criminal Law and Criminology. In these, sur in these surveys, to my surprise, these big police departments administrators were in favor of the Miranda rights. The people who are directly in charge of res and responsible for solving crimes and who are held accountable for unsolved crimes agree that the Miranda rights are too important to be outweighed by their possible errors. I would like to conclude by making suggestions that can pacify this situation, since it is clear that they cannot be eliminated altogether. Police officers are still allowed to freely question suspects before they are taken into custody and do not need to recite the Miranda rights in that case. So I suggest that police officers be trained to utilize that right that they hold a little bit more. Perhaps they can wait a few minutes before taking a suspect into custody, because you never know what information you can acquire before that interrogation. Also, in order to avoid these technicality problems, police officers should have more in-depth training on how important the Miranda rights are and how they should be used. That way, it becomes more of a reflex to say them. This formality emphasizes respect, courtesy, and assurance of freedom, 
Taking away our Miranda rights will be taking a step backwards in history for the worst. Before we know it, our more freedoms will be in jeopardy, and next time, maybe we'll be defending our rights to illegal searches and seizures. These court cases are famous and critical to our country's foundation for a reason. This court case protects us, and it protects our freedom. We must defend our right to the Miranda rights. 